Coming up on this week's episode of an in-depth look, I'll show you the simpler side to making audio podcasts sound great, plus the software I use to put all this stuff together, and I'm going to answer a few of your questions in this week's episode of an in-depth look. Right, and welcome to the editing bay. That's what we call it at least, and it's a collection of different equipment that we use, but it's more than just that. It's also where I recorded our audio shows, like SciBite and the new upcoming show Film Filter that we're working on. And it's nice, I have my own recording setup here where Skype callers come in, and I have separate computer equipment for them, and I have separate computer equipment for the soundboard. And I also then have my own mixer here where I can control our levels, and each caller gets their own track, which really makes our audio shows sound really good. Like if you listen to the SciBite audio only, it's Mm, good. And it's thanks to this mixer here and having each person on their own independent independent channels. But then outside of that, this is also where I'll edit our different episodes in a couple of different methods. Uh, Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro 10, is the tool I use to edit our video shows. And then Soundtrack Pro is the tool that I use to edit our audio shows. And I do both of that. I, both of those tasks can be done here. And then over on the other side, I have a machine where I do some of my more specialty videos, things like in-depth look videos, where they require a little more effort in terms of compositing and green screen work, and I'll show you how I do that. Now, when we want to give something a little extra pizzazz, you know, make it really shine, I'll use After Effects, and I've got uh, an iMac here that we've loaded up. It's a Core i7 machine with 12 gigs of RAM in it, and uh, we'll throw After Effects on here, and I'll use a plugin called Primate Cure Pro, and that is a sweet green screen plugin that really goes the extra dis distance. Now, it's like 500 bucks from Red Giant Software, but if you've got a difficult green screen or you want to really make it really pop, this tool will do it. In fact, one of the things it does that I love is it lets you do light wrapping and tricks like that to make you blend more in with the background. If you combine that with like a transparent adjustment layer on top of all your shots and throw in some like magic bullets, you can really make a green screen scene look like it's all just one integrated scene. And it, when you want that extra professional look, it's a great way to go. And that's what I use when I'm outside of Wirecast. Okay, it's question time. The first one comes from Stefan. And a few of you sent this in, but I'm going to attribute it to him. Ha, you're welcome, Stefan. He just cuts right to the heart of the matter. How much money do you think you've spent on the Jupiter Broadcasting Studios? Eh, it's kind of a hard number to nail down because it's not just the upfront capital investment. I spread it out over like three years. It was a slow evolutionary process, and we're still evolving. You can see it in our videos. You just go back in time, and they look a lot worse. But also, on top of that, there's things like hosting and bandwidth and all domain names, all kinds of things you have to buy all the time. But I would, I would guesstimate my upfront total hardware studio cost is around $20,000. Next question comes from Erad84, and he says, How did you capture your screen live? What software do you use to do that? It's actually part of Wirecast. It uses an extra piece of software bundled with it called Desktop Presenter that broadcasts your screen or whatever window you select to the remote Wirecast system and you can capture it in real time. It makes using screen capture in Wirecast a cinch and then you can do it live during a show too. And the last question I got from a lot of you, is there any way to do what you do with the live streaming and, and uh, camera switching and green screening under Linux, maybe with open source tools? Not that I know of. I think you can do each individual component to varying degrees of success under Linux, but not all combined under one package that does it all in real time. That's kind of a downside too, because I would love to do as much of this production as I could in Linux, so I'm always looking for that. If you know anything, let me know. Other alternatives are out there though for Windows users. Wirecast doesn't just have to run on like a Hackintosh like I use it, you can also run it on Windows, but there's also something called VidBlaster for Windows. And it does a lot of what Wirecast does, and it has different price points that might be a little more acceptable for uh, more of a budget operation. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Now, I have a few things in the pipeline. In fact, next weekend, I'm thinking about doing a quick review of Star Wars The Old Republic. <gasps> what? I know, it's not really my general area, but I'm in the early access now, and I'm playing around with it, and I was curious if some of you guys, if some of you guys want to hear my thoughts. Also in the pipeline for this show, I'm going to do a review of FreeNAS. I'm kind of waiting for them to do one more update first, but expect that. I've also got a few other ideas, but I want to hear yours. Email me, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com, or hit me up on any social network you want. I've got links over at bit.ly slash chrisfisher, 
as well as a way just to push a button and get a contact with me right then and there if you want. I also want to remind you about the RSS feeds for this show. Go over to any episode post of an in-depth look and scroll down in the show notes and you'll find RSS feeds. Subscribe to that bad boy and then you get the show weekly automatically and you don't even have to think about it. It's awesome. Also check the show notes for links to any hardware I covered. If you follow those links, a uh, portion of your purchase supports Jupiter Broadcasting. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of An In-Depth Look, and I'll see you right back here next week.